Hi, Pastor Ed Kropa here from Hope Lutheran Church in Freehold, New Jersey, with daily devotions for Monday, May the 23rd, uh, 2022. Um, since the beginning of the year, or since we began the narrative lectionary, actually before that, um, we were in the Old Testament briefly before Christmas, and then uh, we worked our way through the Gospel of John. The neat thing about the narrative lectionary is that there's a there's it's a four year cycle, and John's Gospel actually gets one of those years, which uh, it never did before. Um, and then we shifted gears um, to the Book of Acts for several weeks, and now here for a couple of weeks we uh, uh, we're going to be reading from the Book of Philippians. Uh, Paul's letter to the Philippians in the in the New Testament. Um, and then in the summer, we're going to do some different things. I haven't quite decided yet uh, what we're going to do with that. Um, but we have Philippians here um, for, I guess, three weeks starting today. Starting yesterday, I should say. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll take a, a look at uh, the reading from yesterday's uh, worship in the narrative lectionary, uh, Philippians 1, 1 through 11. Uh, in just a moment, but let's begin uh, today with the service of responsive prayer. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. You redeem my life from the grave and crown me with mercy and steadfast love. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Let us pray. Holy Lord, may our lives overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help us determine what is best so that we may be pure and blameless in the sight of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, as I said, beginning this week and continuing for a couple more weeks, we're going to be uh, in the book of Philippians. Not nearly enough time uh, to spend, but at least we get a little bit of a taste, a little bit of a sampling. Um, it's Paul's letter to the Philippians. Uh, again, this week we're looking at verses, uh, chapter one, verses one through eleven, uh, and this, and today we're just going to look at the first two verses uh, that read as follows: Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who were in Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a couple of thoughts before I get into kind of where I wanted to go with this today. You know, Paul uh, and his partner, uh, his companion is uh, Timothy. Um, we see in particularly as described in the book of Acts, but also in Paul's letters as well, you know, he, he, that he worked with Barnabas and he worked with Silas and, and even John Mark. And there was a falling out and John Mark went back home and then Barnabas split with Paul and then you had Silas, and then you have Timothy, and uh, undoubtedly there were others as well um, uh, on, the, on the missionary journeys of Paul. And he's writing here again to the, the church in Philippi. He's writing uh, to all the saints uh, in Christ Jesus. Um, 
that's really a reference just uh, to other Christians, to the Christians who are there um, being set apart um, in the life of faith. Um, talks about bishops and deacons, but not in the formalized sense uh, that, that we use those terms today. As one scholar pointed out, you have to remember this is very early on. The Gospels, here's an interesting thing. The Gospels haven't even been written at this point that Paul is writing this. So everything is pretty fluid. Everything is still getting worked out. And these terms are not um, uh, so nailed down and rigid as they perhaps are today. And and then he begins, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, greeting. I was thinking about letter writing. Um, I've never, I've never been a good, a good letter writer, and uh, as time has gone on, uh, be, has have become even less of one. As letter writing, uh, in general, has kind of, uh, uh, has kind of fallen away. Um, I remember my grandmother um, getting letters from some of her children. One of my aunts in particular had beautiful, beautiful uh, penmanship, um, uh, beautiful letters. Uh, I have a couple of letters, actually. Uh, my brother shared this with me. I'm not going to take them out of the bag. Um, but a couple of letters that my dad wrote uh, to my grandmother uh, uh, from, from Europe in World War II. This one in particular um, was from the, the 24th of May. That would actually be tomorrow. Uh, 1945, the war had just ended, uh, and he was writing to, uh, to my grandmother to describe um, what was going on. Actually, maybe I'll open... Uh, open one of these up um, because people wrote letters back in the day, didn't they? Um, in a way that that, that we don't uh, uh, today in many ways. Now they shared, they even had postcards back then. He shared one. Um, Dear Mother, this is May 22nd, 1945 in Austria. Um, our mail is not censored anymore, so if there is any questions you want to ask me, go right ahead. See, the war had just ended, and so they were really um, careful about what they could and couldn't write. I'll have plenty of time now to write. Uh, I'm in the Army of Occupation at the present moment. In close, you will find a postcard of the... Um, the town of, and I can't pronounce it, in Austria, uh, where I am now stationed. Um, people wrote letters uh, back in, in time. Um, important um, figures in history, in particular, have written letters, many of which have been preserved, and they give us a, this wonderful uh, idea of what life was like, even if, you know, certainly there were love letters, but even just letters back home, like, like my dad. Uh, wrote that have significance because um, they often described you know, kind of everyday mundane sort of matters um, in writing to a relative or a close friend. Um, but even these kind of letters had importance because they might reveal and, and researchers in the future could gain perspective, could get a, a painting of a, a picture of what life was like uh, in those times. And of course, there's some famous letters that um, uh, that had been preserved, I, 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 I think, is it the Truman's uh, letters that uh, President Harry Truman wrote to his wife that had preserved, so, uh, particularly presidents and, and, and key figures. And then there's other kinds of letters, too, in, in a way that, uh, written in a way that we just don't see today. I mean, letter writing was kind of dropping off, definitely, with my uh, generation, and then uh, then they invented email. And if you remember, when people first started emailing, you know, they would say, "Dear," like they were like writing a letter, uh, "Dear so and so," and then it was very formal. And now it's just, boom, and there's shortcuts and 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 uh, uh, you know, 
instead of saying okay it's k and, and and then and then from and then from emails we went to to text messages where it's really concise and you just boom boom i mean in the future um they're not going to have historians are not going to have such a uh fertile ground to see what life was like by reading uh the letters of the famous and the the non-famous alike there is a famous letter um attributed to to Abraham Lincoln I think I think it, it it's quoted in the in the movie Saving Private Ryan the uh the the occasion was um that in the autumn of 1864 the Massachusetts governor John Andrew wrote to President Lincoln asking him to express condolences to a, a Mrs. Lydia Bixby a widow believed to have lost five sons uh, during the Civil War Lincoln's letter to her was printed in the Boston Evening Transcript. Um, and it reads as follows, Executive Mansion, Washington, November 21st, 1864. Dear Madam, I have been shown in the files of the War Department a statement of the Adjutant General of Massachusetts that you are the mother of five sons who have died gloriously on the field of battle. I feel how weak and fruitless must be any word of mine which should attempt to beguile you from the grief of a loss so overwhelming. But I cannot refrain from tendering you the consolation that may be found in the thanks of the Republic they died to save. I pray that our Heavenly Father may assuage the anguish of your bereavement and leave you only the cherished memory of the loved and lost and the solemn pride that, you mu that must be yours to have laid so costly a sacrifice upon the altar of freedom. Yours a very sincerely and respectfully, A. Lincoln. Well, the reason why I'm talking about letter writing, and, and again, how, how beautifully written that was, uh, I think second only to the Gettysburg Address, that's believed to be some of the most beautiful words that, uh, uh, that Abraham Lincoln ever wrote. Well, let's, let's bring it into what we talk about here. 27 books in the New Testament. Any idea how many of them are letters? 21. 21 of the 27 books in the New Testament are letters, many of which, not all, but many of which were written by Paul. Uh, and it's through those letters that we really uh, have a glimpse of what the early church was like. There's the book of Acts um, that kind of tells the story, a little bit of a, of a, of a history and a travelogue almost. Um, but it's through the letters that we really understand Paul's theology, and he wrote basically to respond to and address uh, individual congregations and particular issues and theological problems that, that were going on. And so we have this wonderful insight that we would not have otherwise had um, if it weren't for those letters, particularly Paul's. And it's Paul's letters, I think you can argue, um, that made him ultimately the most famous uh, person in the New Testament outside of Jesus himself. Um, and so Philippians is the letter that we're looking at, and it's going to uh, share a little bit of something about the relationship that he had with them. Um, the, the, not so much an issue at here, but in fact, tomorrow we're going to get to the, what I felt was the heart of it that I preached about, yesterday, the idea of, um, of sharing uh, the work of the gospel, being partners in the gospel. Um, but there's some other uh, um, issues that we'll, we'll see as well, not only this week, but next week as well. But I want to just begin on that note, to think of letter writing, to think how that's such a lost art, uh, and, and what it would be like for us as Christians if people hadn't written in ancient times, if Paul hadn't written those letters. Um, if people could have just, uh, uh, you know, done a Zoom meeting or, or FaceTimed or um, whatever. I don't even know all the different social media technologies that people have. Twitter, just a few, you know. Um, so much has been lost. Uh, and, and certainly the, the beauty that, that uh, that's why I wanted to read that letter from Abraham Lincoln, the beauty, the uh, of the prose that just uh, just stands out, uh, uh, and and Paul's letters, um, and we get a taste of them here this week in the next couple of weeks. Um, 
in many cases, he wrote these long run-on sentences, would have gotten in big trouble with my English teachers if he'd had them back in the day, um, but yet chock full uh, of important facts and, 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 and theological issues and points um, and, and, and give us this wonderful um, body, this wonderful treasury of, of letters that help us to understand um, what the Christian faith is, is all about. We have the Gospels, and they were written to help people come to faith in Jesus, but it's through Paul in particular and all the other letters that we get a, we get a glimpse uh, of what was important in the early church um, and what they thought about things and how that can inform our lives and our faith today. So looking forward to exploring these uh, first 11 uh, verses of Philippians 1 with you in the next couple of days, and Hope you get off to a, a great uh, week today and uh, looking forward to being back together with you again tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.